Last week, stocks rallied on solid quarterly results and commentary from Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke, but stock futures this morning are struggling to hold those gains. Today, personal income and spending will be closely watched to gauge the health of the consumer. I'm Lindsay Bell, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Lindsay Bell with The Street, and together we bring you the Morning Call Express. Last week we came into Monday, and it was a down day, but the market was able to hold key levels of support later in the week, despite weaker economic data and some negative headlines out of Europe. What's your take on all of this going into this week? I think a lot of people are coming in cautiously confused. It used to be, used to be cautiously optimistic, cautiously pessimistic. Now people are like, what's going on here? We still have a lot of problems in Europe. You know, Spain got downgraded, we didn't go lower. GDP wasn't great, markets held in there. So the equity markets are holding in very, very well, despite all of these headlines. So, the, so what I'm telling people to do is look at the levels, look at the action, and trade the actual tape not the opinions of everyone throwing out what should be happening, but watch actually what's happening in the markets. And you know, this week we get some more important data. Today we get consumer spending. Tomorrow, I think we get Chicago PMI also today. And then on Friday is that big jobs number. So how do you set yourself up for today? Well, this week? I would say for, the, for, for this week, you want to see digestion of those gains from last week early on. You want to see, do they run us into Friday's jobs number, or do we trade down into support that should be viable? So if you look here at the chart of the S&P, you will see, you know, this is where we came in last week. This was at 1357. That was the old pivot here from April 10th. So right there, we talked about a double bottom. Here was your double bottom in the S&P or SPX, okay? And then from there, you had a nice move up. And then remember we were talking about 1390, can we get through, can we show some power? Well, look what happened as Spain got downgraded and GDP was light. So I think that showed some power in the market. If you look over here to your left, you will see we're 1% off the highs in the S&P 500. So macro investors have been rewarded for holding on to their positions and obviously trading around them. And even momentum traders or intermediate trend watchers like myself, have to be very, you know, I would say happy with what goes on because we've been seeing the signals for every momentum switch and all you had to do is be armed with your levels and trade them and you've been rewarded as well. Some of the key sectors that we saw strength in last week were retail and also the travel stocks. Um, retail was up pretty good despite Coach who reported earnings that, you know, were a little bit weaker than people expected. Well, if you look at the, clu the clues here, look at RTH, just make it simple. RTH, a leading sector, look at the chart here, it's already at highs. It went above resistance, it went above the previous highs, closed real strong. So right there it tells you, if a sector like retail can make new highs in the year, you better not just be bearish rolling up shorts because it could happen in a lot of other sectors. And we saw an energy, like you mentioned also, some money rotated there, and I think EOG was pretty impressive as well. EOG and CVX was also did very well. They increased their dividend last week. So if you look at the chart real quickly here, EOG, not quite at highs, but a nice move off the lows. Okay, this was your reversal here. It powered above this recent resistance, and now it's coming into some moving averages. So if you look at the OAHs, OAHs actually start to act a bit better. You know, you can see this chart is a little bit messy here, but overall, you know, you have a low, a higher low, another higher low. So there is money being made. You just have to time it and look at those signals, and there are those signals, especially if you watch your pivot levels. How about we take a look at Apple, though, too, because that's a leading stock, obviously, and they had great earnings last week, but where's, where's the stock at now? I think this will be very important for this week. We've now, um, we're going on day four of digestion from earnings, so what I want to do is I want to see a pivot low be put in, and I will trade it against that. If you look at the chart of Apple, you will see this is where we broke down. We came all the way down to about 555 into earnings. We gapped up on earnings. Look last time. This is when earnings came out. It took one, two, three, four days before it started to go back up and held this earnings gap. Right now, I would say you could trade versus the low of 650, okay? And if it breaks 650, look for a new pivot. I, I would say if this stock's any good, it won't go below 591 to 595. But once it makes that pivot and turns green, green like it did here, I think that'll be very, very healthy for the market. I'm long sum, and I'm waiting for that tradable pivot to be put in, but wait for it to go through the low, come back above, turn green. That could be the signal. We'll get into all this and more, especially some earnings that we have coming up this week, so stay tuned for the long version. Hi, hi. I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. 
Cheap Relive approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with Teach Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.